301-230-0980 is our phone number. Let's get a call uh, real quick for, uh, let's get a call in real quick before we take a, an early break here and then come back in time to ensure that we get all of Dan Quinn. Let's go to Mark in Largo. Mark, thanks for calling. You're on the Hoffman Show. What's up, Craig? How you doing, my friend? What's going on? What's Look, up, Mark? I was just telling the caller, man, that I think the move I would do if I was Washington before anything would be I would make a trade for Devontae Adams. And here's the reason why I would do that. I think it would be cheaper for them to get him than it would be to get Brandon IU. Plus, Devontae's probably played in the preseason, so him changing teams wouldn't be that much of a big difference. Here's the other thing, too. I'm not knocking Brandon IU. But you need someone on this team who can get 50-50 balls. You have a tall quarterback, and I think Devontae's like, what, 6'2", 6'3"? He would be someone that can get 50-50 balls if he lobs it up there. I'm not saying Terry can't. But it would make the receiving core, it would give a spark to the receiving core where you would slide the army at the, uh, the um, oh, God, that uh, third spot where he's playing, in, you know, which is where Jahan Dotson's playing, that other spot, which he's coming out, it won't be so much pressure on him. It'll be more pressure on those two, and the army can get more open looks going stretch out and stuff like that. I just think it would be better. Do you see a trade like that happening for the team or T. Higgins? So T Higgins for that. Man. Yeah, T Higgins definitely not um because he wants a fresh new contract that's going to be like he's gotcha. younger, stupid money. I'm guessing Devontae probably wants, you know, a lot of money, but maybe it's a little bit shorter term and he, I well, could see, make He's going to be a cap hit. This is why I think the Raiders are probably trying to move on. He's going to be a 44 million dollar cap hit in March next year. So I'm he, thinking the Raiders are really trying to move him now. Well, they would, but, they're still going to have to eat a lot of dead money the way the bonuses work and all that kind of stuff. Here's what I would say about Devontae. You're never going to tell me that, that trading for Devontae Adams is a terrible idea because he might be the best receiver in football still. Like, he's, he's – I mean, I, I guess – I guess – well, uh, I guess I would say Justin Jefferson. Receiver, yes. Justin yes. Jefferson's probably got something to say about that. J.J.'s the best guy in football. But Devontae right. still might be second. He Like, he's up there with Jamar Chase yeah, and, and he, CD. And, and, yeah, he for sure. So, I, I hear you on that. My thing with all of these guys, though, and, and the, the kind of general vision in terms of long-term versus short-termism and all this, Mark, is if you don't let the Diami Browns of the world play, and this is also my argument at corner, why you don't bring in Stefan Gilmore, for instance. If you don't let these right. guys play, you don't know what you have. And so are they a better football team this year? If Stephon Gilmore was signed and Devontae Adams or or Brandon Ayuk or T. H. any of these dudes right. are traded for, 100%, does it help you understand how good of a football team you can be three years from now? And if the answer is no, yeah, but, I'm not interested. Because realistically, yeah, Chris, you, the you, they've never, or in the NFL, history of the NFL, no team has ever won a Super Bowl with a rookie quarterback. And I love Jaden Daniels, no, no. but I don't think that's going to happen this year. Okay, and that's fine, Craig. I, I I feel I hear you on that. But look at what they're doing in Chicago, man. I mean, look, Caleb has an all star receiving core around him. And and if he doesn't do well this year, then that could be something on him. But you gotta make it easy. Here's my biggest fear. I hear what you're saying, but this is what I don't want Jaden to have to feel like he has to do because he has a diminished receiving core. You start acting like Robert used to act. You have to do everything because you don't have the talent around you. You also got to get talent around your quarterback too, Greg. You just can't sit up and say, "Oh well, we're just going to do this and see what happens and make everything happen." Uh, Mark, oh, I I hear you, Robert and I Mark, I got to cut you off because uh, one, the roster just came in, and two, DQ is about to go to the podium here in a few seconds, so we we got to break a little bit early. But I appreciate the call, and you know, if you want to call back in later this week, and we can have this discussion, this this is a, this I is will. a good one. I appreciate we'll the call. I, I'll just quickly wrap up and say this: I trust the infrastructure around Jaden Daniels to not make him feel like that. And one of the quotes that really stuck out to me from Dan Quinn when he named him the starter was, we told him he doesn't have to be the leader of this team. We got Bobby Wagner. We got Zach Ertz. Like, this isn't Robert 2.0 where Dan Snyder was like, look at our star. Like, that's not what they did here. Jaden Daniels' job is to play quarterback, and that's it. And part of playing quarterback for this team this year is going to be doing a lot of turning around and handing the football off. Because they they know they've got to insulate him. They know their offensive line isn't good. This isn't Ron Rivera who thinks he has a Super Bowl contender with a four-win roster. This is a realistic group. 
And I think that goes a long way. And yes, Chicago's doing it very differently. And I'm pretty fascinated by the Chicago versus Washington experiment. But I think it's also important to remember that both can work. There is no right way to do this. There are wrong ways to do it, but there is no one singular right way. And I actually think that the approaches that both Washington and Chicago were taking might be right for their guys with their rosters at this point in their trajectories with what else they had entering their respective projects with the first and second picks in this draft. Hey, this is DA, and you're listening to The Hoffman Show on the Team 980 and the Odyssey app.